So. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful episode here, Jaws Podiatry. Uh, another very, very interesting case this morning. This is a patient who made the very wise decision to come in to see us today. Number one, the patient is diabetic. And during the course, he's had this problem for a couple of weeks now. Um, throughout the last couple of weeks, he noticed uh, some drainage from the toe, a little bit of pus. Uh, it was red. He tried to do the, the, the whole bathroom surgery thing, and that didn't go as planned. And then he presented to see his uh, doctor. Uh, primary care doctor and they try to continue to dig out the offending nail plate the patient presents with with an ingrown toenail diabetes plus an ingrown toenail and I don't care how simple the ingrown toenail is can lead to complications so that's why he when I say that he made the right decision of coming in today he really really did so I they, you, you guys will see that, you know, where they tried to remove, they were able to accomplish, I would say, 50%, right, of the distal portion of the nail plate, which is no longer there. And there's a, a large piece that's also still in the back. So that's what, exactly what we're going to remove today, which can, if left alone, would probably just reflare up the entire toe. As everyone can see, let's take a look here, Elizabeth, please. You know, you guys can see here with the sort of like the aftermath of the initial tries, right? You see all this, you see, look at the callus. There was a pyogenic granuloma here. And the callus was, um, especially this part here, was building up because the nail, the offending nail plate was digging into the nail fold. Now, what's also very interesting about when we talk about uh, MIFAS, right? Minimally invasive foot and ankle surgery techniques. Uh, we're very, as everyone knows, we're very, very big into prevention. Uh, patient is diabetic and you know we were talking about you know he had an injury to the left and because of the injury which was pretty severe he's been compensating his way to the right so what's happening is from a biomechanical right slash muscle tendon imbalance standpoint come around here he has developed look at these look at these puppies he has developed these calluses, especially here, but mostly the third. And we spoke for a very long time that it would be another very wise decision to, to, to perform a little procedure just to straighten out the toe like this, right? Because essentially what he's doing is he's walking on the toe, right? The tip of the toe. And eventually the tip of the toe, right? If the hammer toe right now, as everyone can see, it's flexible. We can move it. We can move it. We can move it. But if the toe was like this and it was rigid, stuck, he would be always walking on this, even though he's already walking on it, right, at let's say 50%. So the end result could be catastrophic, as we all know, we've seen in some of the other videos, an ulcer at the tip of the toe, there's no fat, so there's only skin and bone, skin breaks down, hits the bone, bone infection, and after that, not good. So without further ado, you know, we'll, we'll definitely keep, uh, um, we're going to see this patient back in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll go ahead and reevaluate. He's going to think about the, the, the procedure for the third toe. And I already told him, I think uh, it's just a matter of time, right? We continue to talk about saving limbs, saving lives, saving toes. So this all falls into the whole diabetic, diabetes epidemic. This is how it starts. So this is the time now to really focus our efforts into, into prevention. Prevention and education is the key. Let's go. So again, as everyone can see here, look how deep, look, look how deep it, this, this is going, that deep. And they were able to somehow, right? They were able to somehow do it. And the reason why they were able to, to dig that out is because the patient has a neuropathy, right? A little bit of neuropathy. So he, he doesn't feel a whole lot. Okay, 
it was bad. Let's get a nice clear picture there. At first glance, people may say, well, there's probably nothing really striking in there, but check this out. It is really, really deep. Abi? When you talk about a big nail, look at this. You see what I mean? A lot of people would have never thought that. How is it possible? <laughs> right? That this nail. Right? Wow. The, the patient, uh, for the people that don't speak Spanish, uh, the patient is saying, wow, that's really, really big. So let's come around here and go to that. We'll, we'll go ahead and change our gloves, of course, but I just want to show the people. inside a cave. Huge. Another reason why, again, now that I look at the toe, right? So, <clears throat> let's go back to the topic and this will be, well, let me finish here and then I'll, I'll say what I want to say. Look at this. Look at, come around here. Look, look at this here. You see, you see the how it, it becomes white here. That's where the, look, look, I'm back here. That's where the nail was all the way back there. Right. This is all gonna resorb. What does that mean? It's gonna eventually just come to. Everything's gonna fall right into place. Okay. I'll just go ahead and just trim this callus a little bit. Right here. Right, just a little bit more here. And just like that, we're done. mucho mejor. Excelente. Yes. Okay. Uh, and as everyone can see, that's the bathroom surgery right here. They went this way. Uh, <clears throat> another reason why I don't use a tourniquet. Diabetic patient. The trifecta, right? We've spoken about it before, but patient is diabetic times 20 years. He looks great nonetheless. Diabetes, vascular disease, diabetic patients have problems with their circulation, whether uh, what we call macroangiopathy or micro, large vessel disease, small vessel disease. When people always tell me, right, Dr. Wagner, wh why aren't you using a tourniquet? If the patient has small vessel disease and you're applying a tourniquet, right? You are holding back the the flow of the of the arterial flow down to the toes by using the tourniquet. It's a contraindication, right? It's very dangerous. You can actually you can actually hurt the small little vessels that maybe the last little couple vessels that the patient has that's that's um, that's supplying the blood to the toe. So that's another reason, especially in diabetics, especially in diabetics, why I don't use tourniquets. One time I will only use tourniquets when we do the fetal permanent procedure. That's it, you know? And I just wanted to share that with everyone because, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's definitely a contradiction.
No good. This is a good case. You know, it's a good case for for many people. It's a good case for many reasons. It's a uh, and it just it really is. www.jawspodiatry.com, Facebook Jaws Podiatry, Instagram Dr. Tojem, and last but not least, Jaws Healthcare, our YouTube channel. This is an excellent case. Diabetes, ingrown toenail, structural abnormality, callus. I mean, we're going to definitely keep you guys all afloat, and uh, he'll think about that little uh, minimally invasive uh, procedure. Have a nice day.